this is a very curious piece that somebody made, and you can tell there's some really deliberate reason, but I can't figure out why. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. All right, we are approaching the main floor. Let's see what's up here. Ooh, California Originals dealer plaque. He has a sticker. Oh, the Apollo Lava Glaze. That's a really short-lived glaze for them. That was hard for them to do, and those colors didn't stay in their line. Long. That's that's actually a really rare piece. Blue Mountain did almost nothing that was multicolored like that. It was just oh, no, green or blue stuff. splash usually. Yeah, this is what you see exactly, okay. mainly. They did a few odd glazes. The orange was really scarce and the silver, but that is actually really cool. And it totally looks like West German pottery. That's what I, thought it was I thoroughly expected it to be. And then I saw the California original sign. I'm like, they didn't make that, did they? <laughs> so surprises all around. A whole bunch of Canada dry lighters. I want to believe that they're going to be cheap because there's so many, but no, they're ninety dollars each. So never mind. Then we have this pink umbrella with this great rhinestone handle. That's really fun. I love the stuff they have in their space. I can't afford it, but I understand why they're charging what they are because they have got some really cool stuff. This is a piece of gold shider you don't see very often. Their wall masks were very high quality. And you don't see a lot with the Nubian women. Generally, they were Germanic-looking ladies with big piled hair. This is something that somebody made, and I'm not exactly sure what the function is. It's handmade of oak, and it's got three pedestals. So, I mean, you can use it as they are for business cards or something. But then this little box lifts up here. I don't really... I just... This is a very curious piece that somebody made, and you can tell there's some really deliberate reason, but I can't figure out why. It almost looks like a book with like her Bible and candles, but this doesn't Yeah, exactly. I was thinking it was an altar piece or something, or for like a grotto, but then yeah, it's. It yeah, and it's a picture of a deer, so. Maybe it was for the antlers. Oh, maybe so. Okay, this could not be more 1980s. Lilies in mauve on a lamp. This is coming back in style. Think about this against a gray wall. That's why they were made in the first place. And it's been 40 years. This particular one is $125. You may laugh today. In 10 years, you'll be wishing you bought it. Or someone will. They'll say that much. These are fun. These are Mexican, and they have that tonala style of painting. It's not a Ken Edwards signature. I don't recognize that signature, but they're $39, and candlesticks are a form I don't really see very much. Now, the wine holder here, $39.50, that we see a little more often, but still a cool piece. My aunt had a 73 Ford Maverick, and she really loved that car, but it got stolen and was found on an ice floe in the middle of the Potomac River, completely stripped, which is why she moved away from... Silver Spring, Maryland. $12.50 on that. That's a pretty typical price for car brochures of that era. Here's the 66 Fords, priced the same way. One thing about recording for YouTube is that it makes me look at things I wouldn't necessarily, which is great, and then it gets me interested, and then I have to start looking at them some more. So we did a video in February with a gal who primarily sells pennants and such. So now I've got to look through these because these are $3.50 a piece and they look like they're 50s era. So we're just going to look and see if any of them seem interesting. There's the Amish of Lancaster County where we are currently. Boys Town, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Adventure Town. For $3.50 a piece, these are perfectly fine and they would sell down. There's Tampa, Florida. White Mountains of New Hampshire. Clark's Trading Post, I wonder if that's still there and whether that bear is still standing there. Old McDonald's Farm, Washington, D.C. Iwo Jima's not in Washington, D.C. The Enchanted Forest is only 15 miles west of Baltimore. 
skiing in Vermont, auto center of the world with the skyline, Danbury, Connecticut, where I have an aunt who works at a great thrift store in Danbury. There's Maine. Rail City Museum. These are all perfectly cute. They would probably double in price, maybe a little bit more. There's none that are really super desirable. These with the chieftains, these are a little easier to sell, but they're priced a little higher because of it. These are $10 each. Oh, I know. Well, I'm going to spend a lot of money tomorrow. I don't necessarily have to spend it all today. But I did notice that there's a piece of pottery craft, and I like showing that um, just because. Oh, yeah, this one's got the really swirl thing. It's funny. So this was the sister company to Treasure Craft that did the stoneware. Most of their glazes were by Robert Maxwell, who's a big deal. But these ones that are brushed on were invented by their Mexican-American gals who painted every single day. And they were like, why don't we just swirl it? Wouldn't that really? look cool? And they never got any credit for it. So I always like to point them out. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> they do have modernism in this mall as well. The Mersman Oak and Smoke Glass end tables are something from the 70s that we're starting to see interest in again. This has been a little slower to come back into the market than the teak and the more medium woods with less grain. But we are starting to see people get into this oak as well. And then, of course, we have a Haywood Wakefield console back here. It does have the topper for the china cabinet, but the topper actually belongs to a narrower piece than that base. I've always liked this cocktail set from the late 60s and the teal. They want 80 for that. Here's a story about being in the right part of the country. This woven white jacquard cover that is 65, but this Pennsylvania wool is 145, and that's a good price. Out west, well, we'd see more because they don't find them there, so it all depends where you have things. Then there's this thing they're calling, it says belt tobacco box with a question mark. It is missing a stone in the middle, but this is another one of these. It's actually a cartridge holder from the Ottoman Empire that they would have worn on a belt to hold their bullets. I love the Royal Bay Ruth Devil stuff. I just think it's so much fun. They've got the two little dice shot glasses and the big mug. This is pre-Prohibition. This is 19 teens leading up to Prohibition. And look at all these devil heads they have just in time for Halloween. The male and female devil shakers are priced at 100, but they are really hard to find. I really like this door knocker with the gargoyle face. And that one is 75, and in some ways I think that's the best value for money in the case, as far as the devils go. They also have the Jane Mansfield water bottle, which I believe was an Esquire magazine sold these. 1957. They want 200. That seems to be the going rate if they're in good shape like this. A lot of times the color is wearing off of them. All right, folks, we've got one more level in this mall. There's also three other huge malls in this town, so I am definitely going to have to come back. I'm having a lot of fun shopping with my friends, but... They are talking to the mall owner, and I want to see this last floor while there's still time, because I'm going to have to leave pretty soon to get to my next adventure. So the Sea Shanty paint by number is a good price because it's large for $29. This one that has the guy dressed up with the big head gear there is $60, and the Western ones do tend to sell for more, so that makes sense. All right, let's head on up and see who else we've got here. Calvin Klein right out of the 80s. Let's take a look up close. Because for $29, I have to say, it doesn't seem like a bad deal. Very thin letters on felt. That would have been some sort of a department store display. All right, let's see what else we have up here. This ball is really big. And the quality is good. I have to say I am impressed with the quality of the mall overall. The dealers have good stuff. Their prices seem fair. And there are a few things that are definitely worth buying. I have a couple of them up at the counter right now. We're having so much fun talking that I'm probably missing out on stuff. It's, it's funny, I have to admit, when you're shopping with friends, it makes it tough to focus on the shopping because it's more fun to talk. 
It is fun to talk about what you're shopping for too, though. Bunch of dolls in here. Gollywogs are something that are not allowed to be sold on eBay anymore because they are of English origin and Gollywog was considered pejorative at the time, but they are collectible and there are still a lot of people who will purchase these. This one is priced at 65, which is a very fair price for what it is. Okay, now we saw this couple. They came to the appraisal fair and actually brought something for me to look at that was really fun. And uh, looking to see if it's in here, they are the mod stop. And you can see why, oh, they have an album by a uh, very terrible comedy band that uh, was popular in the early 60s. And I'm not going to say their name out loud. <laughs> We're near Armstrong where they made the cork and tile. I don't know if they made the cork lamps or not, but I love cork lamps. And that's only $85. If it had a good shade, that would sell for double, but... I don't have a good shade for it, and that would cost money. A woman was moved to Oklahoma by her husband in 1957, and she was really bored. And she decided to start a little home-based pottery company, which was called Wine Art Ceramics. And when you see this W, it's a wine art piece. They primarily did beverage sets. They primarily did these drip glazes. They had a brown one they called Frosty Fridge. And... I've always liked their stuff. A lot of times you'll see like six of these in a wooden caddy with horseshoe brands or that sort of thing, called, kind of following that Western look. They were popular in the late 50s, and there are collectors for them now. This is the Forest Green luncheon set with all 22 pieces in the bubble pattern. Bubble is one of the most popular of the anchor hawking early 60s patterns. And in the Forest Green, it's a great Christmas accessory, which is why a lot of people buy them. This one is $4.50. It has to do with the fact that all the pieces are in the box, and it does have the goblets and some of the other pieces that are nice to have with the set. Well, I feel better now that I paid $29 for my triple tulip vase because these are priced at $65 and $95. I think in reality, the $65 is closer to what they're selling for. And another nice older false graft garden there, Jocelyn and Dagny and I were just talking about how older false graft seems like it's underappreciated. Now that most of it is not made in the United States, it might be something that picks up. Well, if you remember a certain election in the early 2000s, John Kerry was called a flip-flopper, and someone made flip-flops with his name on them. At some point, if somebody remembers who he is in the future, this will be collectible as political memorabilia. They're only $12. A nice color for this early piece of Brush McCoy pottery. You see the browns and the greens, but I think the blue is perhaps the most attractive. It's only $25. A lot of people just don't recognize this as having been made by Brush McCoy, but this is back to the 19-teens. And then there's this fun mid-century vase, which has a mark on the bottom that tells me it's German. It probably had a paper label that said that, but is now gone. Okay, this is probably our favorite thing in all of them all, but you're going to see it in three videos anyway, because it's really great. Let me show you. It is this really cool pair of mid-century lamps with the four light spaghetti fiberglass, and ooh, they even have the fake greenery in it for good measure. They are priced at $5.95, but boy, is that a neat looking design. These are very fun for modernists. These were inexpensive. They were done by people in Africa as essentially something to sell along the streets, but they generally have these really fun bamboo frames. They're often signed. I often see this signature that looks like it says hi, although I don't think that's what it says. They're just abstract enough and colorful enough to be interesting. I usually get 25 to $45 on them. They've got 45 a piece on them. Then there's an entire gallery of paint by numbers, horses up in the corner, geisha, ballerinas. I like this one because it's on velvet with the fountains. The lovely girl in the pink hat. Some western style ones. Looks like a bunch sold as well. Paint by numbers are very popular right now and yes prices are rising if they're good quality and particularly for western scenes. The religious themed ones don't sell as high, but they are a specialized category, and people who collect religious iconography do seem to like these. There's even the Last Supper over here. And I'm kind of skipping past a lot of pretty furniture. This store just has a lot of stuff. This town has a lot of stuff, so I will have to come back and see more. But this is a very handsome piece here. 
1890s. It's got a little bit of East Lake spoon carved detailing in the corners that you'll see these little spoon carved pieces here. But it's also got a really nice beveled mirror at the top. And that's what's nice about these is they set just about right where if you needed a mirror, you would have it without having to hang a mirror on the wall. So it does double duty that way. Is this the original mirror? Well, we can tell by putting our finger to it and look how big the gap is. Old glass was thicker and this has a big gap between your reflection and the tip of your finger, so that is old. Mantle lesters do sell even as singles. This one's priced 125 with the prisms and this very cute little girl on it. That seems like about the right price for that one as a solo. And there's these canisters here. I like the galleon on there. This is 1920s Victoria from Czechoslovakia. 1920s because the USS Constitution for its 150th anniversary was restored and sailed around the country and made stops at various ports of call. And it was a big deal. And so a lot of people started buying things with sailing ships as those motifs during that time. The front end of a Chevrolet with a 1934 license plate. This would be fun to repurpose in some manner or just hang as wall art or garage art. Yes, you could use it on an old Chevy, but the chances is somebody will wire this up and use it as lighting of some sort. It's priced at $550. Wayne Husted, the designer for Colony and for Blanco in the 1960s, and he designed for a whole lot of other places as well. He just passed away at the age of 95, and I'm sad to say it because he was a great guy. I really enjoyed him. I got to know him a little bit personally, and he was just so interesting and fun and quite a card. When he first worked for Colony, the Antigua line was one of his big contributions, and here's a piece of it here. It's priced at 65. People are starting to catch on that a good designer did this, so we are seeing prices start to creep up on those. Here is a fairy lamp that you see often. The Mount Vernon by Indiana Glass. This one's $14 in the box. Because fairy lamps are hot, it could well sell for a little bit more. But this is a very basic starter one. I like it. I like the color. But it's not super rare. Or rare at all, honestly. Now let's see what this service plate is from. One third of your life is spent in bed, it says. Oh, interesting. This is Wedgwood. And funnily enough, it is a Wedgwood advertising plate for Simmons mattresses, I believe. And it has a lot of strange iconography. Toucans, birds, koalas, the Tower of London and a crown. I have to say this is kind of inexplicable to me. But it's interesting. I'll give it credit for being novel. It makes me want to read it a little more. Very strange. We're going to see if I can walk down the stairs without holding the railing and not fall and kill myself. I have my hand in the air for balance, yes. Well, this has been such a great place. That is where they're located. It's one of four huge malls in this town, so if you like antiques and vintage, and you're anywhere near eastern Pennsylvania, the Lancaster area, wow, do they have a lot of good stuff here, and I'm about to go buy some of them. Well, what a fun day this has been. Thank you, thank you all for all your help. So much fun hanging out with you guys again. And we all bought lots of great stuff. Jocelyn bought a camera. No, I think she got that when she came in. Hers are all wrapped, so are most of mine, but I did get the earth wrap. I just couldn't help myself. I do too. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!